Welcome back to the MQTT Sparkplug Essentials video series. Today we are going to talk about the architecture Sparkplug uses in order to gain its benefits. Before we go into the Sparkplug architecture, let's take a look at a very traditional, um, probably OPC UA based or other protocol based architecture, which you will find today in a lot of factories and shop floors. So as you can see in this picture, we have what we call a spaghetti architecture. A lot of the components we have here, and this could be PLCs, this could be gateways, this could be machines directly, this could be applications, this could be SCADA systems, could be historians, and a lot of these other systems, they are usually connected point to point, which means if you're adding a new PLC um, to your, let's say, deployment, to your installation, then you need to make a point-to-point -point connection to the respective systems. And so you get something that is very, um, let's say, hard to maintain in the future. But this is actually how it works. Why? Because a lot of these deployments use a so-called poll response architecture, which we'll also talk about in detail in later parts of the series. Unfortunately, this has a lot of problems because this is very unflexible. So if you have this point-to-point -point approach, you really do not get this modern flexibility you require for, um, let's say, the IT OT gap. You usually want to bridge into the scenarios when it comes to digitization of modern factories. So what a lot of companies are looking to is a different approach because people want to have a modern, flexible approach that allows them to do much more than with the old way. And in this picture, which we'll see right now, uh, we see this kind of modern, decoupled approach a lot of companies are looking to. So while you still have all your components like PLCs, you have gateways, you have applications, you have your historian, you have your manufacturing execution system and all these systems, they should use a decoupled architecture where you have a central data, let's say broker, that sends data to all this, the specified components in a decoupled way in order yeah, to gain the flexibility you need for your industrial IoT use cases. And this is exactly what Sparkplug uses. Sparkplug uses this approach, this decoupled approach based on MQTT, which is uh, the central data hub we saw we saw in the picture um, is usually an MQTT broker and with Sparkplug is actually is an MQTT broker. So you get this nice decoupled architecture. You have all your components that uh, do not have this point to point connectivity. You do not have this, uh, this poll response approach, but you have an approach where the all the specified devices, PLCs, gateways and applications they are publishing data about their state and about the data themselves. A few of the benefits we get with a Sparkplug architecture are the following. For example, decoupling of producers and consumers. This is a huge deal because data producers and data consumers do not need to know about each other. This means the, the plumbing is something you can change. So if you want to have the, a specific PLC data in another system, it's no problem at all because you do not need to, to maintain the PLC or change anything here. You just change the uh, data movement on the broker. Then we have a report by exception principle. This is quite different to a poll response principle because data is only reported if it changes. So if you have, um, let's say, a pressure uh, sensor, um, while with a traditional uh, architecture, this uh, sensor would be pulled like once per second or even more often, even if data doesn't change. With Sparkplug, data is only published when it changes. Same is true for state changes. So if a device goes online or offline, this is um, then published immediately. So you, so you don't even need to wait until you have this kind of um, poll interval because you get things in as near real time as possible with the underlying infrastructure. So report by exception saves you so much bandwidth, computing power and memory consumption on your devices, your producers and your consumers. And then there is uh, the flexibility. 
So um, with the flexibility, you can add and remove devices, PLCs, applications at runtime without any change to the underlying infrastructure. Then you have data governance. And with data governance, you can have policies like who is allowed to communicate with which application, who is allowed to receive data and what kind of data, who is allowed to send data to your system. This is something you can maintain and govern in the central broker, um, which is the MQT broker. And then also um, you have a one to many communications. This means Let's assume you have a specific data. Every time this data is published to the infrastructure, um, you have multiple applications that re require that information. In the old uh, legacy world, uh, different systems would pull the same sensor, for example, or the same PLC multiple times, um, and this causes unnecessary load. With Sparkplug, you send the data once to the MQT infrastructure, and then you can have multiple consumers. So you send one data packet in, and you could get, let's say, 10 data packets out, or however, uh, you, how many um, things you want uh, to have. And then last but not least, there is the shop floor to cloud connectivity. And this is also huge. Modern architectures require uh, edge computing part, but also very often you will see cloud computing parts. And with a Sparkplug architecture, forwarding specific data streams to the cloud or even consume data streams from the cloud and publish it into your MQT Sparkplug infrastructure is as easy as it gets because with MQTT, the technology is actually designed for sending and receiving data from the cloud and the broker itself or a component um, like an application can adjust consume data as needed from the cloud or publish data as needed from the cloud and the shop floor will be decoupled completely from the cloud. Because what you really don't want to have is a downtime caused by some internet connectivity issues. This is really the last thing people want to have. So as we have seen to the, uh, today, Sparkplug architectures are quite different to architectures you used to have in the past with a poll response and point to point principles. And actually, the architecture is something why Sparkplug is getting so much popularity because it's so easy to get started. Um, and the cool thing is, even if you have a legacy infrastructure, which most companies have, I mean, greenfield approaches are something people don't have very often, uh, you can even start with a parallel MQTT Sparkplug infrastructure by still having, let's say, the old plumbing, but then also add Sparkplug and then also benefit for your newer applications um, from a new architecture. And so you have a very smooth migration way. Okay, this was it for today. So thank you for tuning in. Please do not forget to subscribe below and uh, also give us a thumbs up if you liked it. Also comment if you have any feedback and we are looking forward to see you in the next part of the series.